Hey, hello everybody. Happy Sunday. Uh, I needed to get a video out real quick here to help out somebody. Um, so we're gonna, you know, the one thing I have not done is I've been solely focusing on fiberglass and I also sell um, round cotton wick and I should do some videos with the round cotton wick as well. So I want to show you uh, real quick. I'm gonna throw together another basin jar candle. I'm gonna use my thermal glass wick tube in conjunction with 1 8 inch round cotton wick. So let's get started. So, so there's no trickery. Here's my spool. I can cut myself some fresh wick here. If I could cut. Aha, victory is mine. Okay, so then we'll just, what I like to do is kind of, you see I like to twist and while I push, and that makes it go in real nice. So we're just gonna leave, you know, I don't want it to fall through, so I'm gonna leave a little reveal like that until I'm ready to go to the final. Then you have your mason jar with some quarter inch holes drilled in it. And we'll feed this through. And you need to put your thermal glass tube through there. We're gonna run one element, we're not gonna go crazy here. You're going to place your mason jar lid like that, and that is going to be ready to twist on. So we're going to set this like this. This is a, you see ash everywhere, this is a recycled mason jar here. Mine as well, right? So, I'm going to use some Tiki Torch fuel. I'll be careful here. Oop, too much. Too much, too fast. Here we go. There we go. That's good. And the other thing I have here, I sell these little HDPE bottles. Uh, these are like travel shampoo bottles, but I'll be darned if they don't make really good, uh, you know, wick priming bottles as well. So you don't have to make a huge mess. They have a nice little spout right there, and you can just very carefully direct fluid exactly where you need it. And so far, I haven't had any trouble with this fluid dissolving my HDPE container either. So. It's been working out well. I also sell these in my store. Uh, these are under travel bottles. <laughs> I suppose I should put together a listing for a wick priming bottle. <laughs> Here we go. So I'm gonna, eh, you know, I'll do like a half inch reveal on that. And so you see that it's been soaking in the fluid down here, but it is still very much dry on the top. So the last thing I'm gonna do is prime it. So ideally you'd let your stuff soak for a little while, right? But I'm gonna try to speed things up for the sake of the video and I'm not gonna do any editing on this video because we're not trying to do any trickery. So I'm just gonna start shooting fluid directly down the top of this wick so I make sure that it's wet top to bottom. Because remember I just set this into the fluid about uh, 30 seconds ago. So I'm gonna make sure I don't make a fool of myself and make sure this is good and wet through. So you wouldn't have to go to this much trouble if you let your wick set for a little while, but I have found that unless you prime the wick um, just before lighting, you could have dry spots in there, and that's going to cause it to not work well. So here we go. I'm thinking I have that pretty well wetted through. So there we go. I'm going to take a paper towel, I'm going to dry up any excess here, you don't want to create a huge fireball on the top. And you should also have a fire extinguisher nearby, I have two within quick reach and I also have a water hose that can have a spray nozzle on it. So. Before you do anything like that, so I'm going to take my wick bottle, I'm going to keep that away from my flame. Take my fuel source, put that away from my flame. There we go. We have a nice, clean, safe area now to light. And I always put some foil down too, just in case. So there you go. I'm going to let this run for several minutes, um, just for the sake that we make sure it's actually working. I'm going to go open some windows and doors so we don't have smoke alarms go off. These always put off quite a bit of smoke when they first start and then once everything gets going it becomes a, a much nicer, smoother flame with less smoke. If you're going to use uh, 
oil candles indoor, make sure your fuel is rated for indoor use. That's going to be how clean it is and how little smoke it's going to put off while it's working. Alright, there we go. Looks like it's doing fairly well. And this is not going to be a very exciting video. This is more just another demonstration video to show uh, that you must properly prime a round cotton wick. Um, I know this sounds silly, and this is probably why uh, Thomas Edison worked so hard to invent the light bulb, because uh, oil candles were not the easiest thing in the world to use. But they sure, sure are nice and pretty, and there's nothing like a flame light. So even though we have LED lights now, it's still nice to have an oil candle every once in a while. And especially when there's no electricity coming out of your wall, that's a really nice time to have an oil candle. So that is quite a substantial flame there. Um, I probably would have done a little less of a reveal if you're going to be using this indoor. Um, I probably have about a half inch reveal right there and you could probably go down a quarter, maybe even an eighth above the glass tube. So we are going to let this run, so I'll let this run like another five minutes or so just to, to show that um, it is definitely pulling fluid from here and we're not just burning off the, the soaking that I gave it. I really love these mason jar candles, they're so easy. So just to let you know, for emergency use, I had this sitting outdoor, uh, probably in the top right of the video, you can kind of see our little planter out there, and um, it had been sitting in a plastic bag, and it just sits out there, and uh, let's say you had an emergency, within you know a minute I can throw all this together and have some light. And I love a flashlight just as much as everybody else, but these modern high power flashlights you know, the battery doesn't last more than a half hour or an hour, and then you're going through a ton of uh, batteries. All right, we're going to just let this run and uh, enjoy the light. And um, we're just going to give it a good long burn just to prove that it is actually wicking fluid from here. Hey, hello everybody. I'm so sorry. I had a battery failure there. That was not good. Um, anyway, so this is a good opportunity for us to blow this out and start it up again. I don't want to have any gypsy trickery here, so I don't want you to see you know, the video cut out because I lost my battery. Um, so I'm going to blow this out and we're going to relight it. Ooh. So, make sure that's... It's not working out very well for us, is it? I don't want to touch that at all. That's super hot. That's what we're going to do. I think we are just going to 
well, I told you it would probably be a good idea to put that a little further in, and so now it is. I'm going to reprime this. Just because you know me, I like a well primed wick before I light it. Dry up my excess fluid. Again, always have a fire extinguisher close by before lighting anything. There we go. All right, take two. All right, we're gonna let this run for a while again, just to show, well, that's even better though, right? Because we, we blew it out, it sat for a second, and then we relit it. That's an even, even better demonstration. So there we go. Now the one thing I will say is I noticed that if you blow this out and um, relight it um, the next day even, uh, it's a good idea to reprime and then maybe even uh, snip the wick a little bit. If you find that when you relight it, it's not working very well, um, I'll trim the wick back down to fresh, clean cotton and then reprime and light again. So here we go. We're going to let this run for another good 10 minutes here. Sorry about the extra long video here, but um, battery died. We're looking like we have three bars in this battery and we're in good shape. I'll charge that dead one. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to let this run maybe just another couple of minutes. I think we have a good show here that um, a well-primed wick works just fine. And, um, you know, the secret to uh, having a successful oil lamp that stays lit for a long time is to make sure your wick is wet top to bottom. And I know that's kind of annoying, but 
in my experience making all these videos, that's all that makes all the difference in the world. I've done several different ways. I've set it in the fluid. You know, you, you put it in the fluid, but you don't pour anything down the top. And, you know, you say, hey, it's a wick. It should wick it up. And, you know, it mostly does. But if there's any dry spots, uh, you're not going to develop a good action there. It's like a water pump. And, you know, you have... Um, within a wick you have to have it completely wetted top to bottom and then you get a good capillary action and you can see here that your flame stays lit no problem Alright, I think once we hit a 9 or 10 minute mark on this second part of the video, we'll shut it off. That's plenty of time to show that it's not just the fluid that was uh, poured in the top is burning off. All right, folks, we're just about ready to wrap it up here. Uh, do a little screenshot for the, uh, I'm gonna leave it, the video going with it lit and I'll close it out because uh, I want to get some shots for the title screen. Anyway, I think this works very well. Uh, we're approaching, you know, certainly about nine minutes. It's a 10 minute mark on the video and I didn't start it right away. But um, it's a good solid nine minutes and this, this, this flame uh, shows no sign of letting up. So um, I think this is going to be fantastic, and uh, I think it clearly shows that um, a 1 8 inch round cotton wick works very well in a mason jar as well as my fiberglass, so that's really good to see. I really like these thermal glass wick tubes. Um, they're very versatile. You clearly can see that um, the round cotton works just as well as the fiberglass 1 8 did, which is really nice, and these mason jar candles are amazing. I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know, with a thermal glass tube here and any metal uh, lidded jar, 
you can make a candle in a pinch. I mean, this is cold to the touch. Still cold to the touch. And that's warm, but not killing me. I'm not going to go up to the top of the lid. But you can see, I could hold this in my hand and walk around with it if I had to. That wouldn't be a, a smart idea from a safety standpoint, but in a pinch in an emergency, you know, your power's out for weeks on end and you got to do something, this is going to work for you just fine. Uh, another thing I like to see is how efficient it is with the fuel. Um, you know, I probably should have marked it, but I, I don't think that fluid level has moved at all um, on a 10 minute burn. So I, I would say, you know, on just a simple, you know, cup or two of fluid, uh, you'd get hours and hours of light out of this thing. So anyway, I just needed to get this out uh, for a friend. Um, to help out and so thank you very much for tuning in and everybody enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you.